I want to tell you my secret now. Okay. I see dead people. Oh yeah, it's gonna be one of those films. You're gonna be just fine, Jeff. The scans look really good. There's nothing to worry about. Tell me what's happening. I'm not imagining what I'm saying. You grow up here believing in things that can't be explained. You've got to be kidding me. It's already been 47 days. Not a lot of time left. What's going on? It was your soul. You're holding on to two places at once. That's why your body is dying. We have to hurry. There's not much time. You're going to see things, and you're going to feel things no one should feel. Don't open your eyes, and don't move from here. If you do, the pathway will close. Yeah, I'll try. He needs me. If there's anything that we can do to help him, we have to try. I just sat through 2011's Hellgate. Not one of the many other ones, including the 1989 horror film by the same name, that I'm pretty sure I would have rathered watching. No, instead I decided I'm going to sit down and watch the 2011 version with, uh, Carrie Ellis and William Hurt. I was surprised to see William Hurt pop up in this film, but in general this is a horror drama uh, that was shot out in Thailand. And the whole concept is a man is stuck between the light world and the shadow world. Basically, the story is that the main character, uh, Jeff, he winds up getting into an accident with his wife and his son. Whoop shot! Hi. They get into a car accident because he didn't want to speed through a yellow light. It turned red, so he decides to back up. Someone plows right into the car, dead, except for him. He wakes up in hospice care, and he starts seeing visions of the dead. He starts hearing people screaming, and eventually just starts seeing dead people all around him. Dead people crying for help, dead people falling off buildings, dead people uh, everywhere. And yeah, from there it just keeps amping up with the intensity of the dead. Eventually, his hospice worker, I believe her name was Joy. It was Joy or Ploy. I'm not really certain which one it was. I heard Joy, but I'm seeing Ploy listed as IMDB. Either way, she eventually gets involved and uh, tries to help him through this as he tries to work back into full health with his legs. Eventually, they go and they have to see a priestess at a local temple who explains what the problem could be and decides to help him. Unfortunately, this only causes problems for her, so they wind up having to go and find the guy who is some kind of master at this. His name is Warren and is played by William Hurt. And Warren is basically just your retired, uh, older surfer guy who seems to know a lot about Thailand and Asian rituals and whatnot. So he's apparently there to help, but right now he helps the priestess, tells her and Joy to leave, and they eventually come back, but he tries to help Warren. And this is my favorite part, by the way. The, at this point, he has been plagued by the visions of the dead, including his dead wife and dead son, or dead girlfriend and her son, whatever it is. And you know what he does to prevent one of them from bothering him? Tells it to stop. Hey, 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 stop it. Stop it. Okay. Okay? Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that actually happens in the film. Maybe not with the whip, but yeah, yeah, uh, the demon spirit, whatever it is, gets pulled through the wall with bad CGI, by the way, and he basically just grabs him and then tells her to stop. 
just stop it. That's when the film does kind of seem a bit cheesy, but as it progresses, it does kind of get a little intriguing. In a way, yes. Warren basically tells, uh, tells Jeff what's going on, explains what the problem is and how he can fix it. So he takes him out to a monastery, and the monastery monks and everything, they, t they lead them to a portal, which is uh, the difference between the shadow world and the light world. Essentially, it's a stargate. I think it's a stargate. It's the fog gate. At this point, they have to go into the stargate. It's the fog gate. F. It's different from that movie, which I have never seen. Jeff first, so he can go and confront his now dead wife and son, well, confront their spirits. But in order to do this, he has to pass by a group of, I guess you would say, zombies. Uh, basically, red-covered spirits that have been trapped in the shadow world that uh, crave human flesh. A weird twist and angle that occurs, but eh, it does lead to a little bit of tension. Especially when he finds his wife and son and basically says goodbye, because the only reason all of this is happening is because he's still attached to them and stuck between the two worlds, according to what is said in the film. So basically, he gets to attached once again, and then it's up to Joy or Ploy or whatever her name happens to be to go in there and take him back. And she does, but once again has to fight off the evil hordes of cannibalistic spirits. Overall, as far as the story goes, it actually wasn't half bad and was paced pretty well. Rarely there were any moments where I actually found myself being bored in any way. And yeah, there were some spots, but even then it seemed to just progress well with the storyline. It was very fluid, and was handled in a very slow pace that made the hour and a half go by pretty, pretty well. I wasn't really checking my watch, I didn't care how long it was until the end of the film. I enjoyed every aspect of the movie's storyline. The acting could have been a little better though, I will admit. Most of the male leads all talk like this, as if every word were an epic monument statement. And that got a little old really quick, especially when the audio from the, the, the ghosts or zombies, whatever they were, kicked in and it was like nails on a freaking chalkboard, amped up to 11. Overall, the film really wasn't that bad, and as far as the scores go, I really can't see this film being a 4.3 like IMDb has or any other score to begin with. If you happen to see this film, if you go in expecting a drama more than a horror film, you'll enjoy this. I really liked it, and it's definitely one of my personal recommendations for 2013 that I have seen so far. Out of 10, I am going to give it a 7 just because of the acting, but overall, it's a film that if you like a good story given some trite elements, it's definitely worth it. Check it out.